Chechnya's leader Ramzan Kadyrov has said his fighters will avenge the drone attack targeting the Russian Special Forces University named after Vladimir Putin in Chechnya's Gudurm's town. Kadyrov said the reason the university was attacked, is that it produced thousands of special forces that played key role in the war. The attack that was launched on Tuesday morning, caused fire on the roof of the building on the territory of the university. Kadyrov said there were no casualties during the attack and that the fire was extinguished. Рамзан Ахмадович, а почему, на ваш взгляд, именно российский университет спецназ для атаки они выбрали? Ну, на самом деле, да, он, российский да, университет спецназ да, он отправил да, он, около 50 тысяч да, бойцов да, он, на войну, и они, эти ребята, забрали да, он, Мариуполь, Лисачанс, Попасный да, он, они забрали, да, он, да, они остановили курс, да, он, и эти ребята пока, показывали да, он, конкретные, да, он, на что они способны, да, он, и а, а, так да, равно поставить там с ними рядом, да, он, а, таких сил у этих шайтанов нету, поэтому вот, они знают, что это кузница кадров военных и для, для того, чтобы напугать нас, да, он, они да, он, ну, так, по пощупали нас. Да. Рамзан Ахматович, будет ли какая-то ответная особая мера на атаку? Обязательно, да. Чеченец своего всегда возвращает домой, да. Они нас покусили, мы их да, уничтожим, да, покажем да, в ближайшем будущем да, да, такое возмездие, что даже им не снилось. Economic problems and a lack of human resources may force Russian leader Vladimir Putin to make important decisions about how to provide resources for Russia's war or change the way it is waged to preserve the stability of his regime, according to the Institute for the Study of War, ISW. The ISW reported that the cost of maintaining the war will increase as Russia continues to spend human resources and material resources at the line of contact. Russia's resources are limited, and Putin cannot ignore these costs indefinitely. The Russian economy will reach a point of burnout. This meltdown will take a huge toll on Russian society, which may force Putin to make important decisions about how to provide resources for Russia's war or change the way it is waged to preserve the stability of his regime. Russia's economy and war effort are under growing strain, presenting increasingly serious challenges for President Vladimir Putin in sustaining the war over the long term. In a report on the 27th of October, the Washington Post said that Russia's economy faces the risk of overheating, as excessive military spending has driven economic growth in a way that forces companies to raise salaries to remain competitive with high military pay. Russian central bank head Elvira Nabiolina warned in July 2024 that the country's labor force and its production capacities are almost exhausted. The Washington Post noted that private Russian companies are struggling to compete with military salaries, increasingly being forced to offer wages several times above typical industrial averages. The ISW recently noted that regional authorities have sharply increased one-off sign-on bonuses for contract soldiers to maintain the pace of force generation of around 30,000 troops monthly. This underscores that Russia's manpower pool is finite and the country grapples with rising costs, both financial and social, to replenish forces on the line of contact. Putin likely views another partial mobilization or a general mobilization as too politically costly for his regime. 
Consequently, he has turned to crypto mobilization strategies, which are putting more and more pressure on Russia's wartime economy. The recent arrival of North Korean troops in Russia, reportedly deployed to the combat zone in Kursk Oblast, further highlights the precariousness of Putin's entire system for generating military forces. Russian authorities reported that they had thwarted attempt by Ukrainian forces to cross in Bryansk. This incident follows a previous bold attack by Kiev that Moscow has struggled to counter. Recall, in August the Ukrainian group attempted to enter the Bryansk region, which borders Ukraine, Belarus and adjoins Russia's Kursk region, which has been the focal point of a Ukrainian incursion since August 6 through the region's Klamovsky district. The Ukrainian forces reportedly retreated after suffering fire damage from Russia's FSB border service and the Russian military, Bogomaz continued, adding that the situation had been stabilized and brought under the control of the regional authorities Alexander Bogomaz, governor of Russia's Bryansk region, stated that an armed group tried again to breach the border but was repelled. He did not specify if Ukrainian soldiers were involved but assured that the situation was stable and under control by the Russian military. There was no immediate acknowledgement or response from Ukrainian officials. Responsibility for previous incursions into Russia's Belgorod and Bryansk regions has been claimed by two murky groups, the Russian Volunteer Corps and the Freedom of Russia Legion. Russian officials and state media have sought to downplay the significance of Kiev's thunderous run in Kursk, but the country's forces have so far been unable to dislodge Ukrainian troops from the province. Western officials have speculated that Moscow may send troops from North Korea to bolster its effort to do so, stoking the almost three-year war and bringing geopolitical consequences as far away as the Indo-Pacific region. Russian officials and state media have sought to downplay the significance of Kiev's thunderous run in Kursk, but the country's forces have so far been unable to dislodge Ukrainian troops from the province. Western officials have speculated that Moscow may send troops from North Korea to bolster its effort to do so, stoking the almost three-year war and bringing geopolitical consequences as far away as the Indo-Pacific region. Russian lawmakers Thursday ratified a pact with Pyongyang envisioning mutual military assistance, a move that comes as the U.S. confirmed the deployment of 3,000 North Korean troops to Russia. North Korean units were detected Wednesday in Kursk, according to Ukraine's main intelligence directorate, known by its acronym GUR. The soldiers had undergone several weeks of training at bases in eastern Russia and had been equipped with clothes for the upcoming winter. GUR said in a statement late Thursday. It did not provide evidence for its claims.